Elden Ring has a massive secret quest line that can take hours to complete. It revolves around some blue chick that you can marry and some furry. The blue chick is called Rani and she wears a really big hat. The furry is called Blythe and he has absolutely been to a convention or two. The quest will see you travel to beautiful underground cities, Florida and the deep water horizon BP oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. You can start this entire Rani ordeal quite early on. If you have explored some of Mistwood, you might have found yourself at this ruin with a massive ass sleeping bear. You probably got your ass beat by it. If you pay attention, you might notice the sound of a wolf howling. Most people might assume that this is just a normal wolf enemy and pay it no mind. However, if you look up, at some point, most of us probably return to the very first merchant we find. If you do this, you will notice that you can ask him about the howling. Kale will give you a gesture that you can use. Also, if you have a spirit, you might find Rena here. Just to be clear though, this is Rena. This character is definitely not Rani. After this, you can then return to the Mistwood Ruins and use the gesture. Yes, that did just summon a furry. However, this is no ordinary furry. This furry literally skinned the head of a wolf and is wearing it. He asks you to help him find some guy and kill him. In your travels, you will probably find the nearby forlorn hound Evergel, which houses this absolute fella. You can then summon Blythe for this fight and absolutely destroy the absolute fella. He gives you a nice reward and gives you the ability to activate mate's rates at a blacksmith. This also cements you as best friends, the start of an enduring friendship that nothing will ever get in the way of. You steal a car and light it on fire in celebration. Eventually you will find your way to this manor, Caria Manor. Out the front of it, a kindly big ass blacksmith will warn you of the manor's defenses. This is the very same fella that Blythe gave you mates rates for. Of course, I ignored his warning because I participate in self-destructive behavior. Caria Manor is full of giant hands. They are very annoying and you cannot easily run past them because they will jump you. After climbing on top of the manor, you will find yourself fighting Royal Knight Loretta. She worked for the people who oppressed the Albanarix. However, it turns out she was actually an Albanarix the whole time. When she found this out, she resigned and applied for a job at the Haley Tree, where she remains to this day. After you destroy her, there will be some towers in the next area. You can enter one of them and climb up it. This is where the true Elden Ring begins. The moment I walked into this room for the first time I thought, holy fuck, this is going to be the alternate ending isn't it? I'm going to be forced into a shotgun wedding with this blue chick. I wasn't wrong, but I wasn't right either. This was beyond a mere alternate ending. I was about to begin Elden Ring 2. I was not too pleased with the idea of having to marry this person to get the alternate ending. It's not because I disliked Rani or anything, it's just that I was already married. Married to the grind. I said yes to joining her eyes wide shut bang cult, and she called me a rare sort. Thou art a rare sort. Man, I love being called a rare sort. She then tasked me to hang out with my best friend and find the hidden city of of Nokron. The rest of her eyes wide shut bang cult were assembled downstairs and I got to meet them. It turns out that the big man was part of the cult as well as some creep called Celevis. However, none of them actually came to greet me in person. They just projected their force ghosts to the tower. Mate, EG is literally down the road from the manor and Celevis literally lives in the manor. I can literally see his house from Rani's. The absolute disrespect. To be fair though, I did project my force ghost to the birth of my first child so I could stay home and play Lego Marvel superheroes. Blythe told me that Nokron lies somewhere at the bottom of the lands between. Now I don't know if you have ever been to a hidden land like Atlantis, Mu or Australia, but they are typically hidden. He said he was going down the well in Mistwood to find it. So naturally I immediately spent a whole hour doing literally nothing to help him before finally going to look for him. I returned to CO for a river and looked for Blythe. I quickly sighted what I assumed must be Nokron and found Blythe standing under it. He mentioned he could see it right above him and in my childlike innocence I even looked above him myself. However, he had no idea how to get up there and suggested I see Celevis. So I go to my newfound ally Celevis, eagerly anticipating what we will accomplish in jolly cooperation. I could not have been more wrong. First, he calls my friend a mongrel. Then, he calls me incompetent. I mean, both of these things are true, but what hurt the most? 
most was this. There's a glintstone sorcerer by the name of Selen in Limgrave. He just told me to go ask someone else for help. Wow. And I thought I was the incompetent one. The thing is though, Selivus is more than just incompetent. He is incompetent and evil. Selivus is probably the most evil character in Elden Ring. Even more evil than the Dung Eater. And that guy led me through a sewer straight from hell. At first you might think he just seems a bit up his own ass. This is absolutely correct, but there is more to it. You may have received the weird potion quest where he asks you to roofie some chick. Well, it turns out it's actually worse than that. If you go to a ruin near his tower, you will find a secret basement behind an illusory wall. There are people sitting around, unmoving, immobile. These are his puppets. They are basically mind-controlled slaves. I think you can work out what a creep like Celibus intends to do with some of them. If you decide to help him make more of them because you are weird, eventually he asks you to give a potion to Rani. This fails because Celibus is incompetent. Celibus, why on earth would Rani accept a suspicious beverage from some naked green guy? She literally inhabits the body of a doll. She cannot eat or drink. Why are you so stupid, Celibus? Next, I spend a solid minute trying to remember where Selen is. She then tells me that I need to kill Radan because he is holding the stars back and that is stopping Rani from fulfilling her destiny. I have no idea what on earth this has to do with Nokron, but whatever. Sounds fun. Radan's castle is eerily devoid of enemies. There is nary a hoot or a holler. I find my way to a courtyard. It is here I see him. My best friend. We have a friendly conversation because we are best friends. Best friends forever. Pot guy is also here. He says that I came. Ah, you came. How delightful. Which is actually kind of a disgusting thing to say to someone. It might constitute a form of harassment. There is also a finger maiden who doesn't say a single word and some loud ass boomer. He will tell you a prepare to cry story about Radan and how he was driven insane by the Scarlet Rot. What he doesn't tell you is that Radan's horse is called Leonard. That's canon. It's in the lore. Turns out that Radan is built different. My best friend is absolutely useless against him. So is Pot Harasser. However, I have a secret weapon, summoning them again when they die. Finally, Radan has fallen. With his death, the movement of the stars resumes and one crashes into the lands between. If you travel to Limgrave, you will find the hole created by the falling star. This hole created by the impact leads into a cave, which leads into a dark and spooky underground cathedral, which then leads into the massive underground city of Nokron. I feel like we need to take a moment to acknowledge that somehow Selen foresaw that a star let loose by Radan's death would crash into this exact spot. Intersecting with of a small cave tunnel and leaving a convenient platform for us to land on, which then leads to the massive underground city we are looking for. What else can Selen see? Maybe she can help me find my car keys or where you buried the bodies. We all know what you did. It is immediately apparent that Nokron fell victim to climate change. All of the buildings have sunken into the ground and blobs of sentient BP oil spills populate the ruins. They also shoot massive spikes at you. These aren't your standard BP oil spills at just kill endangered species though. These are advanced BP oil spills. Nokron is still populated, but it's mainly just naked guys. Normally, this would be fun, but they are actually slaves, which makes it sad. They do pack a punch though. What came next was probably the hardest boss in the game. Just to provide some context, I am commonly referred to as the best Elden Ring player to ever walk the lands between. This is a fact publicly acknowledged by everyone. So when I entered this boss fight, I was expecting to rock its ass. However, little did I know that I would have to rock my own ass. The mimic tier is just Hello. you. This meant it inherited my godlike Elden Ring gameplay abilities. It did not inherit my ability to summon the gank squad. I had been misled. Blythe was actually talking about what he was looking at, rather than what was literally above him. Normally I would whine and throw a tantrum, but Blythe is my best friend, and I would never do anything to hurt him. You can go in two directions from this point, towards the secret treasure of Nokron, or down this wrecked bridge. At the bottom of the bridge is a really hard secret boss fight. 
After a brief sojourn through these ancestral woods that fortunately do not have any of those arrow guys, you will eventually come to Nokron, but if it was even more Nokron than the other Nokron that you went through before. After climbing down some rooftops, you will be face to face with more BP oil spills. However, these are not ordinary BP oil spills. These BP oil spills transform into naked guys. These naked guys are not slaves, but they are malformed synthetic naked guys. Basically, the citizens of Nokron were trying to create a lord using the BP oil spills, but it didn't really work out, and you fight the byproducts. Eventually, you make your way to the bottom of the city and find the Finger Slayer Blade, the treasure you were sent for. This is not the most valuable treasure in the city though. There lies something stronger. It is in this city where you find the most lethal weapon of them all, the Mimic Tear. Now this is where this zone gets really cool. When I first played this, I certainly assumed getting the Finger Slayer Blade would be the end of the zone. However, there is way more to this. You might have noticed earlier in Seofra River that there was this weird upside down tower along the cliff. This place doesn't have anything to do with Rani's quest, but if you are observant, you can find your way to it from Nokron. This leads to a small subzone. It has a few interesting fights and a bunch of naked guys. There are also men who cannot fly. More importantly though, you can actually find an NPC here. He's literally just a villager from Minecraft. You can't do anything with him at this stage, but if you get far enough into the game to get D's armor, something cool can happen here. This guy is actually D's brother, or like a weird clone of D, and you can give him D's armor. There is also a boss fight here that guards another massive secret zone, which has even more bosses and things to do. This is like a whole separate questline though, and I will cover it in another video, so subscribe if you are interested in seeing that. Now that you have the Finger Slayer Blade, you can finally return to the Dole Woman. The Dole Woman was surprised that I acquired the blade instead of my best friend friend. She did the usual thing where she told me how great I am and how I combine the roguish good looks of Brad Pitt and the suave charm of George Clooney. She gave me some days of our lives looking thing. The description says that it reveals the hidden form of the Carrion Study Hall. I had been to the Carrion Study Hall before and fully explored it, so I was excited at the prospect of unlocking its secret. The only problem is, I couldn't remember where the hell it was. It had been like 10 to 20 hours of gameplay since I had last been there, so I searched it on Google. Elden Ring is now metafictional. Once you use the device Rani gave you, the entire tower gets flipped upside down and you get to re-explore it. It is filled with delightful creatures like giant hands, ghost guys, and this absolute asshole. Preceptor Miriam will just teleport away from you whenever she gets low on health. She constantly spams spells at you while you try and navigate the confusing landscape. You can just combo her ass with your dung sword and stop her from doing anything though. Eventually you make your way to the top or the bottom depending on how you look at it. Find a guy who appears to be fat and head to the top of the divine tower where you find some random dead person. This is actually Rani's corpse. When she used the Rune of Death to kill Godwin the Golden Soul, Rani also killed her physical body. You can pick up the Curse Mark of Death from her body which confirms this. The Rani that you know and love is actually her soul inhabiting a doll. The doll is modelled after her teacher, who was a Snow Witch. When you first enter the area containing Rani's tower, the first thing you see is Rena's Rise. <sighs> Another tower. You cannot access this tower because it is locked. Its presence is constantly looming. I would always fast travel to the side of Grace in front of it whenever I went to visit Rani so I could see if the tower had been unlocked. This time, it was. <laughs> Picking up the curse mark of death had unlocked it. At the top of the tower, you can steal Rani's clothes, which might constitute a form of harassment. If you continue up the stairs, you can find a teleporter, which takes you to yet another massive secret zone called Ainzel River Main. In this new zone, you will quickly find an open coffin containing a Rani Funko Pop figure. You can put it on your shelf, right next to your limited edition Nang Pile Funko Pop. If you rest at the nearby side of Grace, you can talk to the Funko Pop like someone with a firm grip on reality. It says nothing because it isn't a real woman. This zone loops back on top of one you might have already been to previously. You can access it by going through this tunnel and finding Christ the Redeemer. <gasps> 
You also get to fight what appears to be a juvenile form of the falling star creature you end up fighting towards the end of this questline. You can access this through the cave that is full of ants. Man, how cool are giant ants? If you keep following the river, you will eventually come to Nox Stella. Resting at this side of Grace allows you to talk to your Funko Pop again, only this time it gets really angry at you. She says that you sullied her name and that she cannot allow you your freedoms. But now the cat is out the bag. I cannot allow thee thy freedoms. The Funko Pop tasks you with eradicating some shadows in return for her forgiveness. I have no idea why this Funko Pop chose violence and savaged my ass, but it did. Nonetheless. This zone is quite cool and there are lots of fun things to find, but it does have one awful terrible aspect. You cannot summon your dog here. The whistle does not work. So you have to walk around the entire zone and the bottom part of it is very big. I mean come on from software, if I wanted to walk around this badly, I would go outside and walk around outside on the pedestrian infrastructure that our tax dollars pay for. There is all sorts of cool stuff down here like guys riding ants, BP oil spills, dead guys, chests that look like chests but aren't, and finally chests that are actually chests. The best part of this zone though is easily the sentient balls. They will literally pathfind their way to you and roll your ass up. The most powerful ball in the game also resides here. You will notice that these balls drop larval tears and have kind of an oily texture on their smooth body. Yes, what you are thinking is correct. These massive balls are BP oil spills. Noxtella was actually founded on the Gulf of Mexico after the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. That's canon, it's in the lore. Eventually, you will get to the end of the area and find some naked guys just like old times. Your reward for wading through all this oil, a talisman that increases your memory slots. Amazing. Now you have to teleport back to the start of the zone and travel all that distance again, but this time along the river. After fighting some snake snails, you will find your way to an elevator which leads to the Baleful Shadow. You will notice that this shadow kind of looks like our best friend. At the side of Grace before this fight, the Funko Pop reveals that Blythe was a servant to both her and the Two Fingers. Though he was created a vassal for an area, he was a colossal failure. Two fingers. I think it's fair to assume that this fight is him being mind controlled by the two fingers in order to stop Rani from completing her quest. Fortunately, he is really bad at the game. I've fallen and I can't get up! so you can beat him rather quickly. You might notice some familiar fungal growths around the arena where you fight Blythe. Once you proceed down the nearby elevator, you are met with quite the sight. Yeah, you thought that Kaelid was the Poison Swamp Zone of Elden Ring. This is the true Poison Swamp Zone of Elden Ring. Prepare to cry. You can spend all of your Scarlet Rot curing consumables here, or maybe use that incantation that helps you against it. I think most players were like me though, and literally just walked through the red goop chugging flasks. I spent multiple trips just running out to garbage items that are deep in the goop before eventually succumbing. You will also find a nice surprise out in the middle of the zone. Yeah. They literally put a boss in the middle of this mess. Fortunately, it isn't actually too hard to just get through the zone. If you work out where the big gate at the end is, you can just run straight to it, activating some platforms along the way. The platforms are so useless though. If you don't have any Scarlet Rot resistance equipped, you will get the Stardust effect just walking between the platforms. If you do have enough resistance, you will have to wait like 10 minutes on the platform just for the Stardust effect to decay, or waste an item. At the end of the zone is the Grand Cloister. This is filled with some fellas who just love their spam attacks. Eventually you get to the end of the Grand Cloister, get to hop into a coffin, and slide off a Scarlet Rot waterfall. This is honestly the stupidest thing you could ever do. Somehow, you arrive at this blue cave, where you find a creature that fell from the stars. Apparently, it destroyed an eternal city, which was probably Nokron or Noxtella. You will notice that its skull looks similar to the head of Lusart, which serves to illustrate the connection between glintstone magic and these aliens. However, like all beautiful and mysterious creatures in From Software games, you kill it dead. 
If you use the key you got from the Baleful Shadow fight to open the chest in Raya Lucaria, you can then use the ring to proceed up an elevator. You will find yourself at some weird moon place. It turns out that this is the location of that structure on the cliff that loomed over Leonia. You are now the one who looms. Once you head up to the church, you get dive bombed by a dragon on your way to the church. This is actually the same dragon that is outside of Rani's tower. If you fight it there, it will fly away once its health gets low enough and arrive here. Fortunately, you can just ignore this fight like a real man's man and head into the church. There is a massive hole in the ground here that leads into a cave. It is here you will find Rani sitting on a big ass hand. It's all cut up and bleeding, as if the owner of the hand suffers from OCD and repeatedly washed their hands to the point that massive cuts opened up on it and got all infected and it was basically this extremely painful ordeal that happened multiple times. Man, that would suck. That's the true prepare to cry. You then basically just propose to Rani's soulless doll. She then appears next to you and says, So it was thee who would become my lord. Rani doesn't even say yes or anything. I don't think she is very excited to marry the epic Elden Ring gamer that completed her questline. I am pleased, however. Oh well, at least she is pleased. That's a relief. She then just gets Fano snapped into the night sky. Congratulations, you have finished Rani's questline, but what about your best friend? Or E.G. the blacksmith? Or that creep? What happened to them? Well first up, that creep gets capped automatically when you get the Finger Slayer Blade. I assume Rani did this as she knew that he would betray her. Blive on the other hand will lose his mind and become hostile at the foot of Rani's tower. This was because he was being mind controlled by the two fingers to go against Rani. He was trying to fight their control. The first time I encountered this, I didn't actually know he was going to be there and I accidentally swung at him, thinking that he was a wild dog that usually spawns there. However, it turns out he basically was one anyway. Usually this would be a prepared to cry moment, but Blive and I weren't really good friends or anything. We kind of kept each other at arm's length. EG on the other hand, I'm sure while watching this you got a sense of will they won't they energy between EG and me. I won't lie, the sexual tension between us was rather palpable. Unfortunately, this forbidden love would never be consummated. Eventually you can find EG dead after he fell in battle against some black knife assassins who were most likely sent by the two fingers. They were sent in order to stop our love. This is the true prepare to cry. So what is the deal with Rani? Rani is an Empyrean and the daughter of Radagon and Renala. Being an Empyrean means that she can succeed Marika as the goddess that rules over the lands between. However, this means that she would be ruling under the outer god that is the greater will, which Rani does not want. To avoid this, she killed her physical Empyrean body and inhabited a doll modelled after her teacher who was a snow witch. In order to kill her physical body though, she needed to steal the rune of death from Malekith and also had to kill someone else's soul in place of her own. Therefore, she sent the Black Knife assassins to kill the soul of God win the golden which left his body behind. Marika threw a tantrum because her children died and shattered the Elden Ring. Now this is where we, the players, come into the story. We first meet Blythe who is a servant of Rani. He is also a servant of the Two Fingers who are an extension of the Greater Will. This means that he is serving two masters who are working against each other. Blythe directs us to EG and Rani where we join her faction. Once we gain access to Nokron, EG imprisons Blythe in order to stop him from being mind controlled by the two fingers to work against Rani. We obtain the finger slayer blade for Rani. Then we follow her through the lake of rot into the moonlight altar. I have no idea why she made us go through the lake of rot and fight Astel. Maybe she just wanted to piss us off. We then propose to Rani and become her consort. Then at the end of the game she uses the finger slayer blade we got her to kill Marika, subvert the greater will and become the new head honcho with us at her side. It's left up to your own interpretation as to if what Rani did was was good or bad. Personally, I feel like most players will not care because they are attracted to her, while the other players will not care because they are attracted to EG. I intend on making videos covering the Jar Guys questline, the Hug Ladies questline, and some other questlines in Elden Ring. So if you are interested in that, you should subscribe to my channel. It would look great on your resume.